Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When God says time, it's time. And there is nothing you or I can do about that. When he takes away our breath, we die. For it's, as it says in Acts 17 verse 28, in him we live and move and have our being. He sustains us and keeps us alive and he is before all things and by him all things consist. Colossians 1.17 And the God in whose hand thy breath is and whose are all thy ways hast thou not glorified. Daniel 5 verse 23 Have you glorified God in your life or have you rejected him up until now? And it's not just in this life, is it? We're looking at life after death. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 19. After we die, there is everlasting life found only in Christ or everlasting death by rejecting Christ. Time. It passes by so quickly. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. <clears throat> a time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 to 8. I wonder what time it is for you in your life right now. <clears throat> we often look back on our life, weighing it in the balance, thinking whether we have done enough or made the most out of it. We can even feel guilty for wasting so much time on things that now we realise don't even matter. We stress, fret and cause ourselves all kinds of problems because we make the wrong decisions, even though at the time we thought they were right. Every time you've rejected God in whatever way, that was a wrong decision. If you're reading this booklet, listening to this CD, you have another opportunity of getting saved, becoming a Christian and securing a place in heaven when you die. Reject God now and you are still on that path that leads to everlasting death. I have written this booklet with one thing in mind. I want you to be saved from hell, from dying in your sins, when you can have them forgiven by Jesus Christ. That's it. I can't force you. It's your choice. The most important choice you'll ever make, even if you don't realise it now. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes 7.17 7, Be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? Many wicked and foolish people die before their time because of the lifestyle they live. Whether they are alcoholics, drug addicts, criminals, promiscuous, heavy smokers, gluttons, etc. If you lead a clean, godly life with moderation, there is much more of a possibility that you'll see the age you're supposed to. If you live a life of sin, expect your life to be cut short. Statistics prove this. Look at how many rich and famous people die young, as an example. But they that be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. 1 Timothy 6, 9. <clears throat> Jeremiah 31, verse 30. But every one shall die for his own iniquity, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, Romans 6.23. I die because of my sin, I am judged because of my sin, 
I'm not comparing myself with you or vice versa. I have to deal with the sin in my own life. And I've done that by giving it all to Jesus Christ in exchange for his righteousness. How about that? For he, God the Father, hath made him, God the Son, to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5.21 for they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to every one that believeth. Romans 10 verse 3 and 4. The only righteousness that can get us to heaven is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Romans 3, 22 to 24. It was Jesus Christ who lived the perfect, sinless life, who, Jesus Christ, did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. 1 Peter 2, 22. Have you given Jesus Christ your sin and taken his righteousness yet? So what does this all mean? It means I, John Davis, have put all my faith and trust in Jesus Christ for my sins forgiven, securing me a place in heaven. What does the atheist have to offer you? What hope can Dawkins or Hawking offer you for the future? What comfort can they bring you on your deathbed? What comfort can they give to your family members? Nothing. They have nothing to offer. They just profess to be wise, yet have missed the whole meaning and purpose of life. They are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. 2 Timothy 3, 7. My faith is in Christ. Where is your faith? It makes me laugh when people say they have no faith. We all do. Have you ever taken a vaccine? You obviously know exactly what they are pumping into you, don't you? How many people put their faith in thalamidomide and scientists? Remember that drug that came out? And look what happened there. In November 1961, thal thalidomide was taken off the market. Experts estimate that the drug, that drug there, led to the death of approximately 2,000 children and serious birth, birth defects in more than 10,000 children. Scientists recommended it. You want to trust science and scientists? Be my guest. It's a free country, so-called. I'll trust Jesus Christ and the Word of God. Before being vaccinated, I would certainly do some deep research into what's in it. I think you'll be amazed. Yet hear the word of the Lord, O Zedekiah, king of Judah. Thus saith the Lord of thee, Thou shalt not die by the sword, but thou shalt die in peace. Jeremiah 34, verse 4 and 5. Die in peace? If and when my time comes, that is how I want to go. In my sleep, thinking or dreaming, knowing that all my sins have been forgiven and then, in an instant, step out of time and into eternity to be with the Lord in heaven. What a way to go. So tell me, what does the atheist have to offer that's any better than that? He tells me, you haven't got a future. You're just a mistake, an animal, evolved over time that has now come to your animal end. Boy, what a comfort that is. I wonder what Stephen Hawking was thinking thinking of in his final moments before crossing that great divide. Imagine that man with his so-called intelligence rejecting God all of his life, yet now believing in him more than any of us. But sadly for Hawking, it's just too late, as his final destination was fixed by himself while he was on earth, when he rejected Jesus Christ as his saviour. He is reaping what he sowed as will every atheist. Whether you believe that is neither here nor there, it's what the Bible says. And the Bible is true. Just because you may not believe it means nothing. 
God is real and one day you shall stand before him and be judged. What you did with Jesus Christ in your life will determine where you spend eternity, heaven or hell. And remember, it's your choice. <clears throat> Ezekiel 3, verse 18 to 20. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. If thou warn the wicked, and he turn from, not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, thou hast delivered thy soul again. Thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die, because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. He is my God and my Saviour, and I want to do all I can to live for him and please him in my life. I spend time reading and studying the Bible, writing booklets and articles, pointing everyone to God. I am warning everyone I can of the coming judgment, urging them to get saved before it's too late. You can take heed to the warnings being presented or let them pass you by at your own peril. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Proverbs 22 verse 3. All I'm trying to do here with this booklet is present the truth and tell you what is coming after death. What you do with this information is up to you. I just hope and pray you get saved by reading it. Death is a certainty unless the rapture happens first. And you should be prepared to meet God, your creator. All through the Bible, God sent his messengers, prophets and preachers to warn the world of what was ahead of them. Nothing has changed. We are still warning people today, everywhere. <clears throat> Ezekiel 18, verse 20 to 32 says this. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. You see, we are responsible for our own sins. We cannot live for or through each other. Verse 21. But if the wicked will turn from his sins that he hath committed, and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. We've all broken God's laws and need the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us and wash us from all our sins. Only Jesus can do this, not religion or any kind of works. Verse 22. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. Once saved, the Lord remembers our sins no more. For I will, I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Hebrews 8.12. Verse 23, have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live? God wants to save you, but it's your choice. He will not force himself upon you. But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity, and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned. In his trespass that he hath trespassed, and in his sin that he hath sinned, in them shall he die. You die because you are a sinner, Psalm 51.5. You are judged because you are a sinner and you are punished because you are a sinner. If you don't have your sins forgiven by Jesus Christ, you have no hope whatsoever, no matter what anyone tells you. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, 1 Timothy 2.5. In whom, Jesus, that is, we have redemption through his, that's Jesus' blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Back to Ezekiel 18.25. Yet ye say, <clears throat> the way of the Lord is not equal. Hear now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal? Are not your ways unequal? God knows what is right and which way is the best way. So get saved, become a Christian, and start living for God rather than yourself. Let him guide you through life. When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and dieth in them, 
for his iniquity that he hath done, shall he die. You either die in your sins or with your sins forgiven. John eight twenty one to 24. Again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed, and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. Because he considereth and turneth away from all his transgressions that he hath committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet saith the house of Israel, The way of the Lord is not equal, O house of Israel. Are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? <clears throat> Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. If you are reading this booklet, you have another day and opportunity to get saved and have all your sins forgiven. Will you take this opportunity or let it go again? Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? Call upon the Lord, allow him into your life to save you. For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God, Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. Just as God dealt with our forefathers, he is dealing with the human race today, offering us the way of salvation. This unspeakable gift that he offers is Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 9.15 Will you receive him or reject him? Atheism has no time for your sins. According to the atheist, there is no such thing as sin, but according to the Bible, there is. Our morals are taken from the Bible as we base our lives upon the word of God. We know it's wrong to steal, kill and commit adultery, etc. because the Bible tells us these things are sinful. What does the atheist base his moral standards upon? Morality starts with the Bible. The Bible says that we have a conscience and just like an alarm, it warns us when we do something wrong. For example, you didn't take your first cigarette or first alcoholic drink in front of your parents, did you? The problems start when you ignore your conscience. It's like taking the batteries out of the smoke alarm. People who have committed some of the most horrendous crimes, paedophilia for example, have burnt out their conscience. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, 1 Timothy 4.2. They have defiled their conscience so nothing touches them anymore. Titus 1.15, Ephesians 4.17-19. <clears throat> John 11.26 And whosoever liveth and, and believeth in me, that's Jesus, shall never die. Believest thou this? Do you believe this? Everlasting life is offered to you, is offered to all those who have put their faith in Jesus Christ. What can the atheist offer you? John 11, verse 50 and 52. Nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man, Jesus Christ, should die for the people and that, whole, that the whole nation perish not. And this spake he, not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation and not for that nation only, but also that he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. By Jesus dying for the sins of the whole world, he proved a way whereby, so he provided a way whereby anyone who receives him as their saviour can go to heaven. Prophecy proves that the Bible is God's word, as no other book on this planet does what the Bible does. Back in 4004 BC, it was predicted that Jesus Christ would come to earth, Genesis 3.15. I have documented another 350 prophecies in my work. Just request a copy. No other holy book on planet Earth does what the Bible does. The Bible is the word of God, and as Christians, we believe it. Atheists don't. Romans 5, verse 6 to 11. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. I am saved. I have assurance of salvation. There is nothing that can happen for me to lose that salvation. <clears throat> when I die, I go to heaven, all because of what Jesus Christ has done for me. Atheists make out they don't believe in God and then spend their entire lives trying to disprove that God exists. Think about that. Let that concept sink in. They spend hours every day trying to disprove God. Do you know what that does? Do you know what that tells us? It proves God is real. Why don't they spend the same amount of time disproving all the 33 million false gods of Hinduism? Or any of the other gods in the world? Or even fairies? When people blaspheme, it's always using Christ's name. No other god, is it? Why does the atheist always attack the Christian God? You know, I know, they know, and God knows. God is real. Jesus Christ is real. And one day, we shall all stand before him in judgment. Atheists can't stand that. They hate that. They hate the thought. So they try to block it out of their tiny minds, pretending that God doesn't exist. Don't fall for their lies. <clears throat> what is the agenda of the atheist? What is their mission statement? Why are they so against Jesus Christ? Makes you wonder, doesn't it? You can learn a lot about someone by looking at and researching and talking with their enemies. The more atheists who attack the Christian God, the Bible and Jesus Christ, just proves that God exists. Your date and calendar are set by Jesus Christ, B.C., before Christ. Why do you have a seven-day week? Any ideas? Because the Bible says we do. Read Genesis chapter 1 and 2. The Bible is authority on life. This earth, with all its rules, gravity, the seasons, laws of nature, etc., is run by the Bible. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 22. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. It's very interesting that in the Bible, the very first book, Genesis, chapter 5, we read the words, and he died eight times. The chapter starts off with, this is the book of the generations of Adam in the day that God created man in the likeness of God made he him. Genesis 5.1 Note generations of Adam. Jesus Christ is known as the last Adam. 1 Corinthians 15.45 So when we come to Matthew 1 verse 1, we read the book of the generation of Jesus Christ. And all through that chapter, there is no death recorded in that chapter. Why is that? The answer is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 22. For as in Adam, that's the first Adam, all die. Even so in Christ, that's the last Adam, shall all be made alive. Romans 5, verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man, that's the first Adam, sin entered into the world and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. You see, when it comes to Jesus Christ... He is life and offers everlasting life to anyone who puts their faith and trust in him. Now what we've just looked at may be hard for an atheist to comprehend, but to us Christians, it's the greatest certainty there is. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 44 to 47 says, It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul, and the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Jesus said about himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6. Life without Christ is pointless, it's futile. And without Jesus Christ you cannot get to heaven or have your sins forgiven. I hope you understand that by now. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life. Him alone. Religion cannot save you, only Jesus Christ can. Here's another passage of scripture the atheist cannot understand. Can you? 1 Corinthians 15 verse 32 to 41. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantageth it me 
if the dead rise not. But the dead do rise. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear, the, hear his voice, and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. John 5, 28 and 29, and compare it with Acts 24, verse 15. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. This is how many people in the world view life. Eat, drink and be merry, Luke 12, 19. For tomorrow we die. But what is after death? That's what they forget. Compare John 11, verse 23 to 27, with Matthew 27, verse 53, Luke 20, verse 33 to 38, Acts 23, verse 6, Romans 6, 5, and Revelation 20, verse 5 and 6. Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. But some man would say, how are the dead raised up? Showing you again that there is, a, there is life after death. And with what body do they come? Therefore, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain. It may chance of wheat or of some other grain, but God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, another of birds. There is also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in corruption. Know this! There is a resurrection of the dead. You will spend eternity somewhere, either heaven or hell. Philippians 1, 21 to 23. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labour. Yet what I shall choose, I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. For me, the best is yet to come. Like Paul said in these verses, to be with Christ is far better than life on earth, and to die would be gain. Don't get me wrong, I love life, and I try to live it to the full. But I know that there is something much better that is to come, and that is eternal life in heaven. I can't wait to get there and see the billions of people that have gone on before me, and even more than them, Jesus Christ himself. The atheist has absolutely nothing to look forward to because he has no hope since he believes he has no future. How wrong and deceived. He will become a believer in God the moment he steps out of time and into eternity, but sadly it will be too late for him then. I hope that if you are an atheist reading this booklet, you will have at least thought a lot deeper about life and realise that there is hope. You've just got to make some radical changes right now <clears throat> Hebrews 9.27 and as it is appointed unto men once to die but after this the judgment there is a day of judgment coming we don't like to think or talk about it because we know that we are all guilty none of us have lived a perfect life we've all sinned and stood, and stood against God and his word so many times but this judgment coming will be focused on what we have done with Jesus Christ in this life either received him as our saviour or rejected him. As I've stated previously, what we have done with Jesus Christ in this life will depend where we spend eternity, either heaven or hell. I thank God I sorted my life out when I was 18 years old. It was then when I became a Christian and had all my sins not only forgiven, but washed away forever. You could do the same right now if you wanted to. It's only pride that is stopping you. Without receiving the righteousness of Christ, there is no hope. Genesis 25 verse 8. Then Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age, an old man and full of years. There is nothing worse than going through your life rejecting God's call while living for yourself. And then, when you are in your old age, you still will not repent and surrender your life to Jesus Christ. 
Pride and self-righteousness took hold of you and you still won't let them go. You think you know better than God and refuse to submit to his will. This is a tragedy that will only result in the biggest mistake of your life if, you're, if you die in your sins. There have been many deathbed conversions, but there have also been millions who still rejected God in their final moments. Don't be one of them. Genesis 35 verse 18, And it came to pass, as her soul was in departing, for she died. When you die, your soul departs from your body. The real you is your bodily shaped soul. Revelation 6 verse 9 to 11, Luke 16, 19 to 31, Revelation 19 verse 8. That soul is eternal and will have a body fit for its eternal destination, either everlasting life in heaven or everlasting death in hell. You choose your own destination by accepting or rejecting Jesus Christ as your saviour. When you stand at the graveside and they lower the body into that six foot hole, the actual person is not there. They have left their body and now reside in their new eternal home. All they are doing is burying a body, a corpse, with no life in it, as the soul has departed. Genesis 50 verse 16. <clears throat> Thy father did command before he died, saying, I wonder what you would want to say to your loved ones when you are on your deathbed. What commands would you want to give them? What did your mum and dad say to you before they died? You see, if they were Christians and you are a Christian, you could both say, see you soon. An atheist cannot say that because they believe they have no future. What a miserable life and death the atheist has. With all the evidence for creation and intelligent design, it is impossible for a person who can actually think not to believe in God. These days you have to be educated out of believing in God through the ridiculous school curriculum of that unscientific religion called evolution. Evolution is not science, no matter how white the coat or how many letters after the name. Some of the best and most famous scientists this world has ever known were and are Christians. Do your own research on that. Exodus 1 verse 6. And Joseph died and all his brethren and all that generation. You get to an age when all your favourites start dying off, whether they be TV personalities, sports stars, actors, actresses, friends, etc. A whole generation dies out. That's a very sombre thought, isn't it? So the next generation starts, and that too goes through the same process. Nobody escapes, nobody beats death, unless the rapture happens. You have your allotted time, Psalm 90 verse 10, and then it's your turn. It makes you think, doesn't it? What have you done with your life? What have you achieved? By rejecting God all your life, you lose out on so much, let alone knowing what the meaning of life is all about. Life without God is a waste of time. Listen, I run a business, a church and a ministry. I'm married and live life to the full. I've played competitive sport all my life, judo, football, badminton, snooker, darts, etc. up until the age of 40. I could sit back now and have an easy life without doing what I do, but I can't. Why? Because I found out what life is all about when I was only 18 years old. Knowing God changed my life, cleaned it up and gave me a purpose for living. I'm not rich, but I am content. I spend much of my money printing gospel booklets such as this and tracts, distributing them worldwide. But why? To help as many people as I can come to know the Saviour, Jesus Christ, as their Lord and best friend. Once you become a Christian, you really start to understand about life. God gives you a purpose and life takes on a whole new meaning. You want to serve God and do what he wants you to. You make decisions based upon the word of God, the King James Bible, and the Lord guides you throughout once you have put your faith and trust in him. I'm not interested in making millions. The more money I have, the more literature I produce. I'm not after your money. I'm after your soul for the Lord. That's it. I have no ulterior motive and no hidden agenda. I'm a Christian, not part of a religion, such as Roman Catholicism, Islam, or Church of England. I'm not part of a cult, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormon, Christadelphia. I'm a Christian. Why do I say all this? Because I'm just an average guy doing the best I can with my life trying to help those along the way find out the truth. Deception is everywhere today. The lying media cannot be trusted. You've got to dig deep to find out the truth these days. 
There used to be a principle called freedom of the press. It meant the right to report news or circulate opinion without censorship from the government and was considered one of the great bulwarks of liberty by the founding fathers of the United States. Americans enjoy freedom of the press as one of the rights guaranteed by the First Amendment. But it's not like that anymore in the USA or over here in the UK. There is no such thing as freedom of the press. The media is just propaganda for those private companies and elites with their hidden agendas who own them. If you want the truth, do not turn to the mainstream media for answers. Today we live in a world that is worse than it was under Nazi Germany regarding propaganda, censorship and deception. If you have an opinion that goes against the government, authorities, health organisations, the education system, YouTube, Google, etc., the next minute you're banned, censored or taken down. You're not allowed to think or speak out freely now, or you'll pay for it. People are like sheep, and they're being played for saps, which ultimately will result in tragic consequences. I thank God that even though I'm under this oppression through this regime, I have freedom in Christ. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Galatians 5.1 and that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, they might bring us into bondage. Galatians 2 4. 2 Peter 2 18 20. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome of the same as he brought in bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. What about these apt words for today, spoken by Oliver Cromwell, who was a Christian, in his speech, dismissing Parliament on the 20th of April, 1653, in London. <clears throat> Cromwell said this. It is high time for me to put an end to your sitting in this place, which you have dishonoured by your contempt of all virtue and defiled by your practice of every vice. Ye are a fictitious crew and enemies to all good government. You are a pack of mercenary wretches and would, like Esau, sell your country for a mess of pottage and, like Judas, betray your God for a few pieces of money. Is there a single virtue now remaining amongst you? Is there one vice you do not possess? You have no more religion than my horse. Gold is your God. Which of you have not bartered your conscience for bribes? Is there a man amongst you that has the least care for the good of the commonwealth? Ye sordid prostitutes, have you not defiled this sacred place and turned the Lord's temple into a den of thieves by your immoral principles and wicked practices? Ye are grown intolerably odious to the whole nation. You are deputed here by the people to get grievances redressed. Are yourselves become the greatest grievance? Your country therefore calls upon me to cleanse this Orgean stable by putting a final period to your inquitous, inquitous proceedings in this house, and which by God's help and the strength he has given me, I am now come to do. I command ye therefore upon the peril of your lives to depart immediately out of this place. Go, get you out, make haste. Ye venal slaves, be gone. So take away that shining bauble there and lock up the doors. In the name of God, go. What a man Cromwell was. We need somebody like that today to do the same to our government. This country of ours has turned its back upon God and his word. We are reaping what we have sown. The future is dismal except for the Christian. As for us, the best is yet to come. England is shot through and will never see those glory days again. There are no more Oliver Cromwells today, sadly. All we see today among politicians are liars, corruptors and deceivers. The only hope for England and this world is for the return of Jesus Christ and for him 
to take his throne in Jerusalem, Luke 1.32, and sort this mess out. Christ is the only hope for all of us. 1 Samuel 25.37, But it came to pass in the morning when the wine was gone out of Nabal and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died within him and he became as stone, as cold as stone. When you die, your body becomes cold and lifeless, just as the Bible describes. Your soul has gone, just a corpse remains. Can you picture yourself in this situation? Imagine those around you, now knowing that they can no longer communicate with you. You have left them, never to return. And the king was much moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went, thus he said, Oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom. Would God I had died for thee, O Absalom, my son, my son. 2 Samuel 18, 33. Suddenly you're just a memory, sadness, loneliness, emptiness, and maybe regret fill your life for the next season until you can come to terms with the death of your loved one. What hope do you have? What are you basing your hope on? What evidence do you have? Walk past any graveyard and see the letters on the tombs, R-I-P. Rest in peace. But are they? Just because you don't believe in life after death or hell doesn't mean they don't exist. Your opinion counts for nothing compared to the Holy Bible, God's Word. Why should you trust anyone with what they think about life after death? Who cares for their opinion? Or yours for that matter. It's what the Bible says that counts. 1 Kings 3.19 And this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. A tragedy indeed. How distressing it is for parents to lose a child, no matter how that child has died. Know this, the moment they took their last breath, they were carried by angels to heaven. Every baby and child that dies under the age of accountability goes directly to heaven. For a detailed study on this, look up the following scriptures. 2 Samuel 12, all of it, but note verses 19 and 23. Matthew 19, 14. Matthew 18, 3 and 4. Luke 18, 16 and 17, Romans 9, 11, Deuteronomy 1, verse 39, Romans 5, 13, Romans 4, verse 8 and 15, Genesis 8, 21, Isaiah 7, 16 and 1 Kings 14, 12 and 13. If you have lost a child, that child is with the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven right now. This is a great comfort to know. If you are a Christian and have lost a child, you shall see him again. An atheist can offer you no hope regarding this situation yet again. 1 Chronicles 29 verse 28 And he died in a good old age, full of days, riches and honour, and Solomon his son reigned in his stead. King David died at a good old age, having lived his life for the Lord. His son Solomon took over from him. Isn't this often the case with family-run businesses, as well as with kings and queens? Maybe you have taken over from your father, or you will soon let your son take over from you. The question is, how have you lived your life? What have you made out of it? What legacy will you leave? Have you wasted your time or redeemed it? Ephesians 5.16, Colossians 4.5. Talk to any old person and they'll tell you the same. Time goes so fast, Job 7.6. They can't believe they're 70, 80, 90 plus. They remember them when they were a child and reminisce how their life was much better in the old days. I've noticed that all atheists talk about is their past, due to not having a future. They dwell in the past. It's not like that for the Christian. I had a great childhood, good teenage years, and I've enjoyed my life right up to date. I enjoy talking about the past, but I also love talking about the future, for this is where my interest really lies. The most exciting time of my life is yet to come. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Psalm 90 verse 12. Don't waste time. Don't let a day go by without really living it and getting something out of it. If you are not living for the Lord, then you don't really understand what life is all about. And he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. 2 Corinthians 5.15 Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. Behold, thou hast made my days as a handbreadth, and mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. 
Surely every man walketh in a vain show. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Make me not the reproach of the foolish. Psalm 39, verse 4 to 8. But man dieth and wasteth away. Yea, man giveth up the ghost. And where is he? Either heaven or hell. As the waters fail from the sea and the flood decayeth and drieth up, so man lieth down and riseth not till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake nor be raised out of their sleep. This is how the world sees it. This is how an atheist views death. Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me in secret until thy wrath be past, that thou wouldest appoint me a set time. Remember me, if a man dies, shall he live again? Yes, he shall. Job 14, verse 10 to 14. Death is the gateway to heaven or hell, as we have seen. The atheist sees none of this, yet he cannot prove it. He just hopes that there is nothing out there. He's gambling his whole eternity on a hunch, a belief, that he is right and the Bible is wrong. Job 21, verse 23 to 26. One dieth in his full strength, being wholly at ease and quiet, and another dieth in the bitterness of his soul, and never eateth with pleasure. They shall lie down alike in the dust, and the worm shall cover them. Death, some, something that happens to us all, whether we are fit or ill. The question is, are you prepared for it? As it could strike at any time. You could sort out your eternal destination right now if you wanted to. The devil would have you to put it off. You're not ready yet. You don't need to do it now. Take your time. Don't rush into it. But each second you put it off becomes more dangerous. And it's not just about death, it's about life, living for God now. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. John 10 verse 7 to 11 and 27 and 28. There is nothing better than going through each day praying to the Lord asking him to help you through all the things you're doing. If you love God, you'll also love his word, the King James Bible. And you'll want to read it every day as he speaks through his word. You won't understand that unless you are a Christian. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. 1 Corinthians 2.14 if, if I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? John 3.12 You see, you need to be born again. You've probably heard of that term. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. John 3, 5 to 7. When you become a Christian, your spirit, sorry, your dead spirit inside you becomes alive, born again, as you have been regenerated by God. Your whole outlook on life changes the way you think, feel, act and behave. You have a desire to do good and seek the Lord's will instead of your own. Your life has radically changed. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 2 Corinthians 5.17 but God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, for he shall receive me. Be not thou afraid when one is made rich, when the glory of his house is increased, for when he dieth he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him, though while he lived he blessed his soul, and men will praise thee when thou doest well to thyself. He shall go to the generation of his fathers, they shall never see light. Man that is in honour and understandeth not is like the beasts that perish, Psalm 49, 15 to 20. You cannot take anything with you as we have already seen. You live for today, that's all you have. You're not promised tomorrow. Building up wealth here only to leave it behind is missing the point of life. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. 
yet we are taught that it is in today's world, sadly. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Some people are never satisfied. They just want more and more, bigger and better all the time. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? You never, never know when death will strike. If Steve Jobs was allowed to live his life again, knowing what he does now, he'd make, some, he'd make changes that you wouldn't believe, starting with him becoming a Christian and then getting the gospel out. You better believe it. So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life what ye shall eat, neither for the body what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn. And God feedeth them, and how much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? It's all about getting your priorities and your motives right in life. Consider the lilies, how they grow, they toil not, they spin not. Yet I say unto, unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothe the grass which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye... What ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Luke twelve fifteen to 31 Seek God first, the Bible said, yet few seldom do. This is the key to life and finding out its meaning. Psalm 31.12, I am forgotten as a dead man out of mind. If you've ever walked past or through a graveyard, you will have noticed that some tombs are overgrown and neglected. Psalm 88, verse 2 to 6. Maybe the family has died out and there is no one left to tend the grave. No matter what the excuse, it's sad when you think upon it. All through history, we like to remember our heroes, loved ones, and those who have had an impact and influence on our lives. What do you think you'll be remembered for? What have you done with your life? Have you helped others? What do you know about those in your own family who only a few generations ago walked this earth? It's sad to think how quickly people forget one another, isn't it? Every day the Christian remembers his saviour and best friend, Jesus Christ. He's alive, Romans 6, 8 to 11, and interacts with us through his word, the Bible, and we do with him through our prayers. Every second of every day throughout the world, Christians are talking to the Lord Jesus Christ and worshipping him. He's their life, Colossians 3. The one they live for. They live for him because they love him, not because of man-made rules and religious systems. You shall meet Jesus Christ, guaranteed. The atheist has the opportunity of getting saved now, coming to the Lord Jesus in humble repentance and receiving him as your saviour. Or you shall face Jesus Christ as your judge after you have died. The choice is yours. Now you can disbelieve it, make out it's all nonsense, shut it out of your mind, get all angry and rip this booklet up and post it back to me. It's been done before. But none of that alters the fact that one day you shall stand face to face with Jesus Christ and be judged. Acts 10, 42. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. Acts 17.31 Because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. 2 Timothy 4.1 I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. On May the 4th, 1989, when I was 18 years of age, I got down on my knees and prayed to Jesus Christ, asking him to forgive me of all my sins and of, that I had committed against him. 
I put my faith and trust in him that second, believing that he took my sins, died in my place, was buried and rose from the dead, conquering sin and death forever, thus giving eternal life to anyone who trusts the work he did, his blood atonement. I got up a saved man and have lived for him ever since. Jesus Christ changed my life and he can change yours right now if you want him to. The question is this, do you want to get saved, have your sins forgiven and go to heaven when you die? Or do you want to follow the atheistic crowd who can offer, offer you nothing, no comfort, no purpose to life and no hope afterwards? The choice is yours. If you'd like to contact me, John Davis, you can do via email john at timefortruth.co.uk or write to me at Time for Truth, PO Box 1146, Kidderminster, Worcestershire, DY 101WG, England, United Kingdom. If you have read every word in this booklet and you're still an atheist, it shows to me just how hard your heart really is how self-righteous and full of pride you are, how gullible and self-deluded. It also shows me that you cannot think on your own. You need another human being to help you make decisions. You're a sad case. If you've read this booklet as an atheist and become a Christian, I am ecstatic. Welcome to the family of God. The best is yet to come for you, and soon you will realise that it's the best decision you ever made. If you would like to contact me, I'll do all I can to help you on your Christian journey. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you've read this booklet and it has really got you thinking, I'm delighted to hear that. Just don't leave it too late. Keep seeking the truth and ask God to guide you in every decision you make. Keep in touch and let me know how you get on. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. All thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Proverbs 3 verse 5 and 6. And unto man he said, Behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding, Job 28, verse 28. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, Romans 1, 20 to 22. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Colossians 2, verse 8. If you would like a free copy of this booklet that I've just read to you, just drop me a line requesting one, and I'll post one out to you free of charge. May God bless you. Turn to him if you haven't done right now, asking him to forgive you of all your sins. And if you have any questions, please let me know and I'll do my best to answer them for you. I pray that you'll get saved today, right now. Amen. <laughs>